Welcome back. We're joined by NetSuite Senior Vice President of Cloud Operations, Brian Chess, as well as Cohere's President and COO, Martin Kahn. Thank you both so much for joining us fresh off the keynote stage, too. Wow. Thanks, thanks for having us. Um, Martin, I want to start with you. Uh, for anybody who maybe missed the keynote, can you just tell us what does Cohere do? Sure, so we're an enterprise AI company. Uh, we build, train, deploy the large language models and all of the tooling that goes around them uh, to enable a lot of the applications that I think a lot of consumers have been excited about over the last several months. Uh, what we do though is deploy those only in enterprise. Uh, we're independent, we're not beholden to any large tech company who prioritizes uh, their own uh, products. We're cloud agnostic, we work across clouds very closely with OCI of course. Um, and we're really focused on deploying this to create business value for enterprises. And what would you say makes Cohere unique? For anybody that's tuning in right now that's like, oh, their AI is all over the place, you know, what, what makes Cohere stand out? Uh, well, I think some of that core positioning and focus, um, we're only enterprise. We don't have consumer chat bots. We're not trying to get a million <laughs> subscribers at $20 a month and, and, and so on. We're just focused on helping companies to create value. We don't create applications ourselves because we want to enable our customers to create applications that will then uh, uh, really uh, create value in the market, including and especially uh, at NetSuite. We want to help NetSuite deploy this technology for their own customers and build into their capabilities. Um, we do have state-of-the-art machine learning capabilities and, and, and talent. Um, our CEO and co-founder, Aiden, was one of the inventors of the Transformer, which is the T in GPT. Um, our head of uh, our chief scientist built and led DeepMind's language team. We've got the person who invented sentence transformers for semantic search, uh, and the person who coined the phrase and, and wrote the seminal paper on retrieval augmented generation RAG, which are some of the breakthroughs that's really bringing the, the true value of this to enterprise. So there are really just a handful of companies building large language models. Um, and most of them have flown kind of under the radar, but what do you think has allowed Cohere to jump into this group and towards the top of the, the pack? Is it all the things you just talked about or are there, were there other accelerants to that? It's a good question. I think uh, the two, two of the key ingredients are access to compute and talent. I talked about the talent, um, and there are only a handful of companies with the kind of talent who are literally inventing the next step. Um, we don't even know what's going to be there in three, six months, but we have the people who are uh, developing this, or Sarah Hooker, who leads our non-for-profit research arm, Cohere for AI. She works with thousands of developers on an ongoing basis to, to make sure we're on the cutting edge there. Access to compute is something that needs capital, also just needs the, the right kind of partners. Um, we're very fortunate to partner with, with Oracle here for our compute needs going forward. Uh, and that was a very competitive um, uh, competition where the performance, the price, and the, uh, uh, and the availability just, just fit very well. The super clusters, I think we've heard a bit about that in some of the keynotes, is a, is a, is a real thing. Um, and I think the third element is an operating team that has very deep experience serving the most sophisticated demanding enterprises at massive scale. So I was previously the CFO of YouTube. Um, our uh, head of product uh, ran all of location services for Apple. Our head of Eng was at AWS and set up some pretty, pretty massive uh, projects there, including an air gap region for the CIA. We have people who know what it's like to actually take some amazing technology, but deploy it at scale and build a business that, you know, that, that can serve enterprises uh, like NetSuite who need this to work really, really well without, you know, with 99.999 uh, um, effectiveness uh, in the field. You know, Brian, speaking of that, um, speaking of our partnership, um, why would you say Cohere was most compelling to partner with NetSuite? Well, I'll say a few things. <clears throat> First, and most important is maybe the point that you ended with, it works. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, that's it's really important. actually <laughs> very important. In, I mean, this is the topic of 2023, and so there's a lot of froth out there. Um, but it's also a fantastic time to be a software developer and be working with some of the most exciting technology and satisfying technology to get in there and actually make this in, these integrations work. Yeah. So that's item number one. 
Second thing Martin also, also mentioned is the deployment model. So the fact that we can consume the, uh, the models from Cohere through the OCI generative AI service means that all of our customers' data stays within OCI. And that's really, really important to us and really, really important to our customers when it comes to data custody, knowing where their data is, security, privacy. Yeah. So that's fantastic. I'll make one more point here, and that is NetSuite has always enjoyed working with our customers. So it's just a great opportunity. But Cohere has been a fantastic partner for us. They really do understand what it takes to make something go in the enterprise. And so we have got a fantastic collaboration going. Martin, this growth is, is great, it's fun. You talked to, with Evan about some of the, the direction that Cohere is going in, but, but you're still kind of in those early stages. What are some of the challenges that a company like Cohere faces as a business? Yeah, we are, we are still a startup. Um, I joined in January, uh, which seems like a long time ago wow. now. Yeah, uh, lots, what a year. A lot, a, what a year, exactly. That's a 10 years in AI yeah. years. Ten, ten, 10 years, dog years, I suppose, AI years. Um, but we have grown our headcount by 89% year to date. Uh, we have customers uh, all over the world. We have offices in San Francisco, Toronto, London. We're opening one in New York City. And so we have a lot of the challenges I think many startups do have. How do you run the business and balancing agility with uh, you know, discipline and, and, and operational rigor? I, I know that well from, you know, from uh, my, my time at Google, but this is a small company that needs to be agile. And so we're actually quite excited to now be a user and a customer of NetSuite. Uh, we, we, you know, we've had a mishmash of different systems and different, different apps that we use as we grew from a tiny company. It just got to the point where that's not sustainable and we can't run a business, especially with the amount of capital we've raised, with the amount we're spending on various compute elements, uh, with the customer base we have, without much more rigor. So we're very excited to be deploying NetSuite, um, which enables us, we're going to start with the core and get that right in yeah. finance, but then you know it can grow with us as we layer on more and more needs and capabilities, including you know across the globe. Right. Very exciting. Yeah, I love to hear, you know, you're doing such amazing things in the AI space, and yet I love to hear you on stage saying, like, we're looking to, you know, quicken the close just like everybody else. I think that's, you know, such an issue. People will relate to that, right? So, very, very interesting. We got to move into the topic of the topic, right, which is AI. I want to actually get into NetSuite and AI. So, Brian, Evan talked about NetSuite's AI strategy um, and the idea that AI could really assist and advise. He just talked with us about this right in the segment before this. Um, first, can you elaborate on how we're thinking about that across the product and how these ideas will really impact our NetSuite customer base? So one of the things we saw throughout this year is that there was like, AI was in the headlines all over the place. And you could have a poem written about your favorite topic. And that was <laughs> like- Apparently parakeets. Uh, uh, par yeah, par I love that. Sure, go with the parakeets. Yeah. Uh, and that was like really cool. But what does it have to do with me? And what does it have to do with business? Like I think that wasn't really clear. And so one of the first things we wanted to clarify is how do we see our customers actually benefiting from AI? and assistants and advisors. That was sort of the first way I thought about it. I think we turned that into assist and advise. Yeah. But first I was thinking about like the little robots running around in there <laughs> doing, doing your bidding. Yeah. Uh, um, and so it makes a, a lot of sense. Some, you know, there's a lot of value in traditional AI stuff too, uh, um, making the correlations, doing the forecasting. But, and there's been a lot of progress that people have made there, but it has been still hard to access. So what we see uh, co coming now is the ability for us to really get that AI everywhere. When we talk about AI everywhere, we mean in all value streams, in all roles. It doesn't necessarily mean every button that you click needs to be AI powered, but it really, but it does mean that you know, when you log in as a sales rep, there's AI that's working for you. When you log in to manage the warehouse, there's AI working for you. AI really does apply to everything, and it does those two things. It assists, in other words, does the work for you in some cases. Easy example there that Evan talked about, uh, um, bill capture. Uh, we need to make sense of, of what's on that PDF and turn it into something that makes sense in your NetSuite world. Um, and advise, maybe tell you what, what those numbers suggest should happen next. And generative AI is a fantastic tool there. 
Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, what, what I heard you guys talking about a little bit on stage was, you know, NetSuite um, as an intelligent agent. Um, and, and that's kind of, a very, I mean, both of you can remark on that, but that's an exciting uh, development from our point of view, I would think. Um, so, agency is a tough topic, if you ask me. I, I, um, I think where we are today, this is the state of the art 2023, it makes sense to have a human in the loop. In other words, don't send the AI off on its own to run the business for you. Uh, have the AI assist and advise. Implicit in that is that there's a human there overseeing that work. I agree with that. That's very important, and it's one of the things we've talked about even in some of the policy discussions. It's very important to define when you need a human in the loop, when it can be a suggestion, or maybe three alternatives that the human would then would then would then select between. Yeah, it's a good it's a good point. To to uh, you know. AI is there to uh, to assist. They're still human uh, to make that final decision. Yeah. And I think I, I want to just end right there. Um, we get to talk to a lot of customers. Um, we happened to be at Cloud World just a month ago talking to customers about AI, um, and and we've been talking to our customers here and customers out you know in the field over the last uh, you know over 2023. AI can be um, you know a little scary to approach. What advice do you both have for businesses in approaching AI right now? How do you even just like get started? Where do you dip your toes in? Um, Martin, we'll start with you. Yeah, it's a great question. We were actually talking about that a little bit on the way over. Um, it's very important that, that you don't risk what someone else told me is death by a thousand POCs. Right. And just keep trying a bunch of things through an API and lots of demos and poetry writing, whatever it might be. Pick something probably a low risk use case. It could be employee onboarding. It could be getting FAQs on how to use something. And deploy that in your data environment with the connectors to the different data sources uh, that maybe aren't quite so sensitive on day one. Figure out how much compute capacity you need to run this, how it's going to work, really, really work in production. Once you sort of figure out all of those um, maybe a little bit more boring topics, but quite frankly more important for ultimate deployment, the next use cases you add on and layer on top are going to become that much easier. You're going to be at a huge advantage to someone else that's done POCs you know, for, for months and months and now says, how do we deploy that with our sensitive HR and financial data? Right. Oh, wait, we, we can't. Back to the drawing board. So I think it's just pick something, work with a, with, with a, with a, uh, a partner to deploy that and figure out how it works at scale. It's something we're excited to do together, to innovate together. Once it actually works, then you can layer on more and more advanced elements on top. Great. Brian, what would you add to that? Uh, I, I think some of that boring stuff that Martin mentioned, <laughs> the data. The algorithms are going to change. The world is changing very quickly, but underneath all of it is the data. If you don't have the data there, if you don't have the data organized, there's no magic we're going to sprinkle on top of it to make it work. So what you can do right now is get your house in order as far as the data goes. Yeah, that's a that's a really great point. Just really appreciate you both diving in with this on uh, on uh, with this on us. Um, and I just uh, look forward to the future of this partnership. Thank you so much for for both of you being here. Thank you.